Hello, and welcome to Crooked House Gaming. Here at Crooked House Gaming, we like to explore the gameplay of simulation games, usually through a series of Let's Plays. In this episode, we will continue to explore the gameplay of Democracy 4. Democracy 4 is a political sim that lets you choose the role of a world leader and govern a country. If this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, be sure to hit that like button, and if you're new here, welcome. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Democracy 4 is by Positech Game. This game is in early access, and so this game is not yet complete, and gameplay may have bugs. We are presently playing our second term as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. We are now entering the fifth year of our second term as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Let's hit that button and see how we did. Here's our quarterly report. Organized crime. The police have now cracked a problem with organized crime and the crime lords are now behind bars. Tax evasion. Tax inspectors report a surge of tax evasion with large sums of money going unpaid. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we will have a potentially bad situation with corporation exit is on our hands if we do not act soon. United Nations Secretary General. One of our prominent diplomats has been appointed Secretary General of the United Nations. They will become the spokesperson and leader of this powerful global organization, acting as a world moderator. Patriots are up 10%, everyone's up 5%, and the foreign relations is up 7%. Budget report. There is a budget deficit of 36.30 billion pounds. We need to reduce spending or raise taxes. Well, we're having a problem with tax evasion, so raising taxes might not solve of this problem. Tonight's news headlines. I cannot thank the government enough. They literally saved my husband's life. I'll vote for the Labour League until the day I die. This is the views of Martha Powell on tonight's show after she praises the government policy on organ donation for saving her husband. After a tragic motor vehicle accident, she is of course just one of many who has this policy to thank for saving their loved ones. Polls report. The government is not popular amongst its citizens. It has only 27% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as loyal. Their effectiveness is generally considered to be fair. Let's take a look at our cabinet ministers. Oh, look at our welfare cabinet minister. He's only a plus eight. Let's uh, fire him. Let's see who we have to hire. Let's hire a Island Anderson. I could try to hire Stanley Ward, but he doesn't have any specialty in welfare. Alan Anderson has a specialty in welfare, and he is with the poor and the environmentalists, and we've been working with the environmentalists, so let us hire him. The economy minister doesn't is not happy, nor is the public service minister. We have 11 political capital to spend, and we have tax evasion on our hand. I do not believe we can do anything with unexplained wealth orders. We are at the maximum with that. Plastics tax affects the GDP, but it will raise us some income. Plastic waste is a major concern among environmentalists due to the very long time that plastic can remain in our ecosystem. A tax on plastic production ensures that environmentally friendly alternatives are chosen instead when suitable. We have a deficit we have to address, and so we have to tax something. We can't raise the income tax anymore. We have tax evaders, so let's do a plastics tax. To raise it all the way to the end, we will raise at least two billion pounds. We have one political capital remaining. What to do something like small and put it in tourism campaign, tourism ad campaign. Tourism is not only a source of income for many people and businesses, it also strengthens foreign relations. This campaign will run in foreign countries, showing our most beautiful places, important sights to see, wonderful people to meet, tasty beers to drink, and may even throw in a few free tickets to museums and shows, all in the hope of attracting people to visit us. I'm gonna spend our last political capital on this. I'm doing it to max. Apply the changes. We have zero political capital. We are at the end of our first term, of our fifth year, of our second term as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Let's hit that button and go into our second term. GDP is down. Unemployment is up. Petrol protests. Protesters have gathered outside petrol depots to protest about petrol prices. They are interrupting the supply of petrol to petrol stations. Campaign speeches are available. Election draws near and you may want to take some time out of government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Black market on our hands if we do not act soon. Credit rating downgraded. A major international credit agencies have downgraded the status of your government's debt. This is likely to have a knock-on effect on your GDP as foreign companies become wary of investing in your economy. It will also result in the interest rate we pay on our debt rising. There's a good chance that this will upset our capitalist voters too. We should take action to regain credibility with the ratings agencies 
by reducing the level of debt as soon as possible. Your current credit rating is now triple B. The capitalists are unhappy, 5%. The GDP is down, negative 3%. And business confidence is down at negative 15%. Budget report, our credit rating is worryingly just a triple B. We need to fix this either through growing our GDP or cutting expenditure or increasing taxation. Polls report, your approval rating is disappointing. If we believe the polls, you would just get 20% of the vote. We have 11 political capital. Let's do some campaign speeches. We have unhappy capitalists. Yeah, let's do a speech for the capitalists. The conservatives are sort of not happy with us. The wealthy are sort of not happy with us. The religious are not happy with us. We'll give a speech. So the capitalist speech is doing really, really well. The conservative speech is not doing so well with our crowd. The religious speech is a little bit better than the conservative speech. Our approval rating with the capitalists are up 10%. Our socialist friends view us at a negative 5%. The conservatives approve of us at plus 15. The liberals disapprove of us at negative 5. And the religious approve of us at 10%. Okay, we have two political capital remaining. Corruption is any form of dishonest or unethical behavior by those in positions of authority, both in the public and private sectors. Corruption creates a drag on our economy as resources are stolen or squandered inefficiently, and it curtails foreign interest in aid and investment. Voters become increasingly untrusting of their nation's administration as corruption rises. Intelligence services. Security services are essential tool in the fight against organized crime and terrorism. Good, reliable intelligence can be difficult and expensive to obtain, and in many cases, the methods employed can be unpopular with liberals and human rights advocates. Companies are our last two political capital. Perhaps this can address the black market situation that's going on. We are down to zero political capital. We are at the end of our second term of our fifth year in our second term as Prime Minister of the UK. Let's hit that button and go to our third term. We are now going to enter the third term of our fifth year of our second term as Prime Prime Minister of the UK. Let's see what happens. The GDP is up. Unemployment has stopped going down. Education is still at maximum. Crime and poverty are non-existent. Private space industry. The private space industry is growing noticeably in our country. Although historically big space projects have been undertaken by governments, advances in technology means that there is now a huge potential market for commercialization of space exploration and space travel, including private satellites, space tourism, and even asteroid mining. GM food proposal. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. A number of large agricultural companies are interested in growing a genetically modified food on our soil. Some food can be genetically manipulated to allow a longer shelf life and both disease and herbicide resistant. Opponents are concerned about potential risks of associating with altering the food chain. Farmers are divided on this issue. Allow GM crops. GM crops have huge potential benefits. Not only do they increase the shelf life and thus reduce costs for the sellers, but they also reduce the need for pesticides, thus meaning less harmful chemicals in use during their production. It also is possible for foods to be created with other benefits such as improved vitamin content. And the sale of GM food. There is no need for GM food. Benefits are great for the producers, but not for the consumers. We simply do not know enough about the long-term effects of genetically modifying the food chain. Scientific research is all well and good, but once released into the environment, these organisms cannot be recalled. We should act now to protect the food chain from GM. I'm going to ban the sale of genetically modified food. Once out in the wild, we don't know what will happen to it. Environmentalists are happy at 13%. The GDP is down at negative 3% and the capitalists are unhappy at negative 3 Situation is imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Bureaucracy on our hands if we do not act soon. Budget report. The International Credit Rating Agency rates our government at a triple B. This is a bad sign. It is pushing up the rate of interest we pay on our debt. We must address this. Polls report. The government is not so popular amongst its citizens. Only 28% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. Campaign speech is available. The election draws near and you may want to take out some time from government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Election report. Election is drawing nearer. We currently have 163,651 members in the Labour League. The opposition party has more members than us. The Natural Law Party. The opposition party has 15%. We have 1% and the United Republicans have 0%.
zero. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as supportive. Their effectiveness is generally considered to be fair. Global forecast. The global economy is in a recession and this is having a negative effect on our GDP. We have 11 political capital to spend. Let's do some campaign speeches. We need to woo the capitalists. We need to woo the trade unionists. And I need to woo the wealthy. <laughs> Capitalists are up in their view of us at 15%. The socialists are down in their view of us by negative 10. Trade unionists are up 15%. The self-employed are down 5%. The poor are down 5%. And the wealthy is up 15%. We have two political capital remaining. Packaging tax affects the GDP, but we need to raise money somehow. Even with recycling, the use of excessive packaging can be an environmental disaster. One solution is taxing the production or use of packaging materials. This gives business an incentive to work on a more efficient design for their product packaging. Let's do that to maximum. Let's spend the last of our political capital on this to raise some money for our government. We have zero political capital remaining. We are at the end of our third term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Let's hit that button. We will be entering the fourth term of our fifth year in our second term as Prime Minister of the United kingdom let's see how we did unemployment is up that's not good gdp hasn't moved that's pretty good education is almost to 100 percent world heritage site an international body has awarded a landmark in our country world heritage status this award is reserved for sites that have significant cultural historical and scientific value to the interests of humanity our special location will now be legally protected by international treaties and we expect a large boost in tourism as the world visits our marvel Ilgarian society, the dawn of a new era is upon us. Our society has become more equal and accepting than ever before. This makes many people happy. Understanding our different backgrounds better and better these days due to cultural exchanges and education, people are now treating each other equally, blurring and even erasing the lines between different races, genders and beliefs. Living in such a society makes people very happy and less likely to cause harm to others. Major international credit agencies have downgraded the status of your government debt. This is likely to have a knock-on effect on your GDP as foreign companies become aware of investing in our economy and it will also result in the interest rate we pay on our debt rising. There's a good chance that this will upset our capitalist voters too. You should take action to regain credibility with the ratings agency by reducing the level of debt as soon as possible. Your current credit rating is now a double B. Capitalists are unhappy at negative 5%. The GDP is down negative 3 and business confidence is down negative 15. Manifested promises are available. The election is upon us and we might want to take the opportunity to improve our support by making manifesto promises to the electorate. Campaign speeches are available. The election draws near and you might want to take some time out of government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Situation is imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Corporate exodus on our hands if we do not act soon. There's really nothing that I want to do here. I can work on stability. Stability of the state. This is a measure of how stable the incumbent regime is in your nation, taking into account the broad range of indicators to assess the risk of collapse. Instability will have an impact on foreign relations, investment, and tourism, and indicates that there are fundamental issues with your country's governance. Government debt seems to be our problem. What are we expending our money on? State pensions. So state pensions is our highest expenditure. State health service is pretty high. Healthcare vouchers is up there. Foreign investor tax breaks. Foreign investor tax breaks. Special tax breaks given to large foreign owned multinational companies to encourage them to invest in our country. This could include tax free periods, introductory rates of corporate tax, and straight subsidies. To Helps to encourage investment from overseas but will be seen as incredibly unpatriotic and pandering to the whims of huge foreign capitalist organizations. My thought is if our companies want to leave the country that I'm not going to be giving tax breaks.
We need to raise some money. I'm gonna lower it to about one. I'm gonna apply that change. Polls report the government is not so popular amongst its citizens. Only 36% of them intend to vote for you in the next election. So let's do a campaign speech. Capitalists are unhappy with us, 37%, so we'll do that one. Trade unionists are happy with us. The socialists are happy with us. The liberals are happy with us. The self-employed are not happy with us. The ethnic minorities are happy with us. The conservatives are not happy with us. I'll give two speeches. So this speech seems to be going pretty well. Whoa, the speech, the speech tanked. Wow. They did not like that speech. The approval of the capitalists is up 10%. The socialists is down 5%. The conservatives are up 15%. And the liberals are down 10%. We have two political capital remaining. Still have this tax evasion going on. Proportionate fines. No fine is a deterrent to antisocial behavior at all if it does not scale with income. What may be a colossal and finance wrecking penalty for some is a mere inconvenience for the ultra wealthy. By making all fines scale with income, the law can finally be applied equally to all. Is that fair? I'm going to use our last two political capital. We are out of political capital and we are at the end of our fourth term of our fifth year. Now, I could end the episode here, but I would rather see if we win the election or not. So let's hit that button and see where it takes us. Here are the election results. Let's start the count. voted out as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So we will be ending our series of Prime Minister of the United Kingdom here and we will be ending our episode here. Thank you so much for watching our series as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And thank you so much for stopping by our Crooked House. If you liked what you saw, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow our future episodes. It really helps us out. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Any input is very helpful to us. Have a great week. See you soon.